Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Welcome to the Theatre of Magic guys, my name is Greg and today we are doing a pickup video which is a drop off video. So uh, <laughs> again, I, how many times am I going to keep saying this? I'm not wanting to pick up any more games. Uh, today is a little bit different. Of course I have to give you the backstory. So. On Gumtree, I've seen this really strange looking arcade machine, guys. Genuine arcade machine. And I have never seen anything like it. Um, so, I, you know, I thought it was interesting when I first looked at it. Initially it came up and it just said negotiable. So I thought, well, I'll just let that go. It's a bit too weird for me. <laughs> um, but then it came up with, with a with a pretty low price on it. And I thought, well, I'll have another look at it. Looked at it, thought, still thought it was weird. <laughs> so I sort of let it go. And uh, then a few days later, I hopped back on and the price had gone down again. So yeah, I haven't seen this machine anywhere myself personally over the years. I couldn't see it on the internet anywhere. And yeah, maybe it is like a, a rare machine, but I don't know if it's something of historical importance necessarily. Um, but I did look at the parts and I thought, well, there's some good parts here um, for the price. And I do have another project of mine which actually needs a monitor with the chassis, of course, the transformer, needs uh, the wiring harness, um, needs controls. And of course, this cabinet's got all of those things, the switching power supply as well. So, you know, if you go and <coughs> buy all those things individually um, it really starts adding up so it does make sense to to pick up a game that might have all those parts and be able to to, to reuse them now <clears throat> again this <laughs> cabinet like it's not actually i can't give it a game name because i, I this was looks like what would have been maybe a universal type of cabinet from lai back in the day um, that they may have put any game in and um, yeah, it's not particularly specific to anything. So in a way you could you know, use it as a main cab or something like that, you know, it's not, it's not telling a story about a particular game, but it is telling a bit of a story about the sort of um, design <laughs> that was going on back in the day uh, and what they thought would, would look cool. And uh, wheel this thing in and then we can take a, a bit more of a look at it now it wasn't it, apparently it was working like with a board that he plugged in he, it doesn't come with a board but he tested it with a board and it was working um of course it's now not doesn't have a board but i can probably grab one of my jammer pies or something to test it but he it, it, it stopped working and uh, and that was part of the price drop as well now what i'm afraid of there is that maybe the monitor's completely crapped out it's sort of unlikely i think that the chassis would have Sort of completely gone maybe i i don't know i'm just really hope hoping there's nothing wrong with the tube because when you see this thing guys you'll see that the tube is actually quite exposed in this particular cabinet and um it may very well have got damaged and i hope that's not the case because that's one of the one of the big key reasons i want <laughs> this for its parts is for the monitor so anyway we shall see um has some other cool things on it we'll wait uh, to get it in here before we show you those um, what is it? <laughs> what a um, interesting cab. Here we go. Legit. Loser and Allied. So guys, this is a full plywood cabinet. And in here we've got, you know, coin box and transformers, switching power supply, harness, a um, couple of coin mechs. Right, so we have it inside, and guys, we were going to plug it in because apparently there's chaser lights that go around the outside here, um, on the inside. There's definitely a, I can see there's some cable in there. 
Um, the only thing is though, is the plug is cactus. Um, looks like it's completely split pins. I tried to stick it in the wall, but quite frankly, it wasn't going all the way in and really, it really needs to be changed. Now he did actually say that the chaser lights were going and then he said that of course that the monitor wasn't going, you know, well anything. He saw, uh, in fact he didn't really say what happened but it sounded to me it was like there was nothing and if there was nothing mm. then it's more than likely when he tried to plug it back in again, who knows. I think we might be lucky. The other thing is is that it, this is a solid um, plywood cab. And you know, originally I thought, well, I'll just take all these parts out and then I was gonna sort of not really think about keeping it. But now I've seen it and I've just had a measure, a measure up of the control panel and it's actually the same size, seems like it exactly, to the ice cold beer control panel. So even though obviously this would be a very non-traditional ice cold beer, I could take the monitor out, put the ice cold beer in here. Because at the moment, I must admit, I don't play the ice cold beer that much because it's just that control panel sitting there sort of on itself. It doesn't, doesn't command much attention. If it's in here, uh, even though obviously it's emulated still, pull the other parts out, use it for another project, and um, that's pretty good for the price. All right, guys, well, there's probably not much more to say on this guy. Right, guys, we well, thought I'll check out the plug and try and bend the pins back with some pliers and I did that and got it into the wall okay and uh, as you can see we've got the chase lights going on this beast <laughs> but um, unfortunately I'm looking around the back here and I'm not seeing any any evidence of net glow there at all and I know it's a bit light in here but I think we should be able to see something and there's nothing there, which is a real shame because it may be that that tube is no good. I mean, given the fact that this has been exposed um, and been moved around a bit, may have been knocked. Um, the tube might not be any good, but look, I'm jumping to conclusions at the moment. At the moment, certainly doesn't seem to be getting any high voltage through to the back of the tube. However, we do have lovely uh, colorful chase lights <laughs> which, is, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, what I'll do is I'll just set this up on the tripod. I'll just take off this front cover. I also did that and just had a look in there before. So let's take that off because I actually want to get this tube out of here anyway. Um, and also I'll show you how the ice cold beer control panel was sort of a fairly close match. So who knows, you might even be able to get that to fit in here as a replacement. So we'll check that out as well. So you can see the first thing is the, uh, the ice cold beer control panel is uh, exactly the right width and pretty much, I'm going to line this up here, it's pretty much the same height as this. Um, interestingly enough, there's actual clips <laughs> under here that would actually potentially hook into the clips on the, on the ice cold beer. This one doesn't actually have the clips. It looks like someone's just tried to screw them in on the side, maybe. So it's certainly not using the clips at the moment. But anyway, we should be able to take this out. It's got a bit of a, a lip here. I don't know if that's just lipping over the top or not, but even if it's not, I think we might be lucky. This might actually sit on there okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a pretty unusual ice cold beer, guys, but uh, nonetheless, Actually, it's going to make a really good cab, but I mean, at the end of the day, this is really solidly built. As I said before, it's in ply. You know, this whole thing, I mean, to do this yourself, um, it's a lot of, lot of wood and a lot of time to actually construct something like this. You know, with this all being cleaned up and maybe some wood grain, ice cold beer stickers down the side here that you normally have up the side of an ice cold beer machine, it might actually look all right, you know? Obviously take all this metal off and get it all cleaned up and get the rust off and the kick plate down the bottom all sorted. It could actually look pretty, pretty cool. So anyway, let's get turn this off and then we'll get this front off. I'll show you what's behind there. And it should be bolts all the way around here. I have taken all those out and just got the one holding it. And this is a funny shape, this. This has got a bigger bulge actually at the top than at the bottom, so when I do turn it around, that might look a little odd, although I don't think you can really detect it. I think they had the, like a, a sticker of the game name here. 
um, and that's why the slightly different size I think certainly a residue from a sticker from up here but anyway let's take this off interestingly inside you'll see once we get behind here that there is a way of mounting the existing monitor vertically so it looked like they planned for that so just behind this extra facade here again there was just two screws on either side that one out and that whole facade comes off and again you know this is all bended wood and yeah, a bit of work's gone into this guy's making this. It'd be a shame to to not use it, I must admit. You know, initially I did say that I'd just use it for parts, but um, <laughs> really is a pretty unique machine. So you can see here they've got um, brackets here to, you know, orientate the monitor into a vertical. So, so it can be done. I just think that plastic won't be quite symmetrical when it's in a vertical orientation. But anyway, what we want to do, if I'm going to use this as a nice bolt, got cold beer replacement, I actually need to get this monitor out. Um, and again, I'm, I'm concerned that we're not getting high voltage to it, if it's the tube or not, or something to do with the power. I mean, the power is relatively straightforward and we're getting, certainly getting power in there. So anyway, um, I think what we might do next is I might just take this control panel off and let's just see if we get lucky um, with the ice cold beer control panel so let's do that now okay so just remove these two bolts from here again as I said this should be sort of latched in really and uh, the front of that slides up and off one Two. And the joysticks and everything look complete so they can certainly be reused in some way shape or form and this really actually this looks very much like one of the standard size control panels even for the Taito so it'd be interesting to see if that's the case because if it is so I think the Taito Hex has another bit of wood just behind here but it's about the same sort of size Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look because this may even be actually a candidate for another control panel to swap in for the the Tato. Obviously, I want to get a proper Defender cabin, um, control panel for that one, but even this is another option to change up the games that we've got in there. So we'll see. Anyway, now underneath here, um, looks like the ice cold beer is not going to line up with this with these blocks in the way. But it looks like I can remove those and they've sort of really look like these have been put here after market anyway. They're not in there very firmly to just sort of hold this in place. And I think if we take that out then we should be able to hopefully marry up to the back of that. So let's just sort of line it up and see before we undo this. Yeah, well, it looks like even the back of this, the back of this, um, uh, Ice cold beer's got a lip here, which I think actually is going to sit on top of that once we get these side pieces out. And it may actually fit on there like really well. It might, it might be made for it, guys. It's just, just really bizarre. So let's get these um, side pieces of wood. This one's really uh, broken up anyway. Let's get that out. This one's got a nail in here. So I might um, just try and lever that one out. Wow, that was really in there. Even had uh, had pushed through to the outside when they nailed that in. Isn't good. Okay, <laughs> nasty. There we go, a moment of truth. Does it fit flush, guys? Let's have a look. Watch the cabling behind there. A 
Wow. Almost, almost perfect. Small ridge. But look at that. I tell you what, if, if I, hmm, probably wouldn't want to do this, but if I took off just a small section of the back here, just off this piece of wood, it would just move it in that little fraction more so that that would line up directly with that. Let me show you. So you can see just here, just a little gap, right? And all that's stopping that, for that lip to come over, is the piece of wood under here. So if I cut that, just tuck a little bit of that wood off from the original panel, then yeah, this would slot straight up and would be then flush, because we've got a little bit of an overhang here. Excuse the blue tack from it being sitting on the, on the table. That overhang would disappear and it would actually be a perfect fit. I can't believe that. What a turnout that is, you know? Imagine with the Tato, Tato ice cold beer on the side, put some brown wood on there first. And it, this actually might look pretty cool. I mean, obviously it's gonna look a little bit weird with this uh, top bit on, but if nothing else, it's a, certainly a conversation piece. Um, but how's that? <laughs> Isn't it funny how things turn out, guys? I did not buy this cabinet and this machine thinking that I'd use it for ice cold beer but um, it's going to work out that way pretty well you know and I was talking about getting a bigger monitor as I said before of course a bigger screen wouldn't fit in here in a vertical orientation I think the one that I've got now will so we'll see how it looks and then I think you know if it looks good enough then we'll leave it like that and if we take out all the internals in here I can put some you know I could even put some shelves in here and this could actually be a really good storage location shame I can't get my fridge in there to be honest <laughs> this would double up as a better fridge solution and then get a real cabinet for the uh, the main box hmm okay well the next thing is, is I do need to get this monitor out of here um, so I need to discharge it first, and again, I'm not really sure if it's even got to, to got high voltage through to it or not, because we had no net glow when it was on. Anyway, I shall uh, discharge it anyway, and then um, get the chassis off the top, and get this monitor out of here. You know, it's certainly not going to have it like this anyway. It's unsafe not having a back cover the original back cover's gone and it would just take up too much floor space anyway you can see on the back here they got the you know those little kickstands we, we looked at before just to stop it from hitting against the back of the wall i guess but with that monitor out of there this is actually quite a quite a slim profile i mean it's you know literally really like a real ice cold beer machine in terms of its profile um so Wow guys, still can't believe that. I can't believe that that fits so well. And just with a little bit more tweaking, I could get that fitting perfectly. It's as if it was made for it. <laughs> okay guys, well, I'm gonna start work on getting that monitor out. It's gonna probably be a two man job. I need to get someone, one of my boys probably to unscrew this while I hold on to the monitor. We're going to have to carefully ease it out, but first of all, discharge it, disconnect the chassis, and uh, then let's get that guy out of there. Right, so we got the monitor out. It was relatively straightforward. It was a little bit difficult because obviously taking it out up in the air and holding the weight of it as it came out was uh, a two-person job, but um, got that out okay. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to give it a good clean. Obviously, as I said, I do want to get some um, veneer on the side and some ice cold beer decals. And, uh, and also I need to take this big metal piece off here and get all the rust off and stuff. We won't do that today. I will take these back legs off. And once I get all that done and all cleaned up, then effectively I can at least bring it inside for the moment then add those nice little touches later on. And the tube is out here, 
And as I said, I really hope that this tube is actually okay and there was some other issue why it wasn't um, getting net glow. Okay, so let's get this finally cleaned up and get it inside. And there you have it, it's in the theatre, finally. And I tell you what, I'm damn happy with it. I am really happy with this. Now I know we don't sort of normally say prices and stuff because it is all relative, right? Depends where you are around the world and what things cost to you locally. But um, if you think about a arcade uh, chassis board, uh, the cost of that in your local region, halve it, maybe take a little bit more off. That was basically what I picked this up for, guys. So it was <laughs> absolute steal. Now, I don't know if the chassis and the monitor actually works, as you know, I've pulled it out, but uh, I don't know if there's something wrong with the tube or the chassis, we're gonna have to find that out. So maybe I've got a dud there, I don't know. But even if I did, uh, even getting the rest of this for that amount of money is just so good. And to think that you know, I passed it by because it just looks so obscure. And, you know, it, this is just one of those things where you really have to look at these machines, even if you don't use them for perhaps the purpose that they were originally intended. Um, this makes a absolute fantastic jukebox. I mean, I wanted to have a, a jukebox in here of some sort of, some sort. And uh, this fits the bill perfectly. It looks bizarre enough to be a jukebox. It's got all the nice flashing lights around the outside. I probably will add to that too and get some music sensitive lights and stick that around and uh, make it light up like a Christmas tree. Uh, 
but it really does look the part and it's really unique you know you walk through the the door here in the theater and it's just like what is that thing um, it really commands attention and of course now I've got a home for the ice cold beer control panel which is just awesome as well because that was just sitting on a shelf and as I said it really wasn't being used and now it's in a cabinet you stand up you, and then you really feel like you're playing and this sort of half semicircle tube like gives a funny effect on the screen it just doesn't make it look like an LCD anymore um, I mean you know it is but it just just I don't know it gives it that sort of arcade feel so it's really bought out playing ice cold beer making it a lot more fun but uh, you know there's still a lot to do guys um, you know I've just got it in here really I haven't really cleaned it up and really you know polished it up and I think there's so much more I can do to this to sort of really make it a feature sort of jukebox and my own special thing in the room and you know I think that's guys this is half the fun of this hobby right this old beat up old cab you know that was would have been discarded effectively saving stuff like this and turning it into something unique um, it's just part of the creative process which I think is so much fun and I hope you do too when you sort of find things that are really obscure and find new uses for them I think that's really cool much more satisfying than just going out and you know buying a Rockola jukebox um, envious if you do have a nice Rockola jukebox but um, just the same it's uh, it's cool to repurpose something in in this manner now there's still as I said plenty to do in here um, one of the things I need to really sort out is the fact that this lighting is actually 240 volt lighting <laughs> on the on the on the end of the tube it's actually got written there 240 volts and I, I don't know I don't really like have 240 volt lighting running around the place um, these days of course it's all generally like 12 volts and stuff no, there's no need for 240 volts guys so I don't know I might change that out potentially you know I might leave it there and maybe wrap some you know 12 volt lighting around it some music sensitive stuff that flashes with the music I need to get some really good sound system in here to really make it pump like a jukebox and uh, I haven't fixed the lights on the coin door and stuff and of course the front door needs some work and bits and pieces so still plenty to do um, the control panel here too I need to cut that off a little bit and so to push it up flush but and, and the back needs to come off and all the rust so I mean this is <laughs> this guys is a big project this is definitely a big project um, but I'm glad to get it inside get it in the place it's very low um, profile in terms of its um, its depth and uh, therefore it doesn't take up so much of the room I mean seriously guys <laughs> you can hear me babbling on here but that's because I really really am happy with this machine <laughs> just I was not expecting to, to use it for this it's just absolutely crazy absolutely crazy by the way you saw a few screensavers um, going through that last video there um, one of them back to the future which you may have recognized you can do a search on that you'll find that screensaver really really cool you actually get an iPad version of that too um, got an old iPad stick that on it repurpose it stick it up on the wall that's a cool idea and uh, and the other one was um, electric sheep that's what it was called electric sheep check that out guys that's actually a really unique program that um, it actually pulls it pulls together the compute power of, of of computers on the web so it does actually potentially use some of your own compute power while it's while it's running only and to and then it actually uses that power to, to generate some really awesome um, screen savers let me put it on and it generates this sort of stuff which is all rendered on you know top end computing equipment centrally creates AV, AVI files and can make them seamless and then they actually download those, download those down and then it just you know replays those videos as if it's sort of doing it live so it's really low impact in terms of um, processing power locally when you're playing it because it's really just playing a video file but it's totally dynamic so it will download new stuff on an ongoing basis so you're completely getting you know new files and you can vote the screensavers up and down to see which ones that you like and the ones that you don't like sort of go down further in the queue like worldwide it's a really bizarre sort of project check that out anyway do a search on it electric sheep um, quite a bizarre thing but it certainly produces some some awesome visuals <laughs> great for a jukebox as well 
So yeah guys, that's um, that probably wraps up this, this particular video. Again, super, super stoked. Um, I think, you know, as a learning experience out of this, what can you do? You gotta really look at those, those buys and those really weird machines and just work out and think, you know, what can I get out of it? And even if it is just a parts machine and you know getting good parts out of it, I mean that's that's great as well. But just the cabinet itself, like look at these strange machines for the cabinet. Think what you might be able to do with them, have some fun, be creative. Um, anyway, that's it for me this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, look, thanks for subscribing for those guys that have subscribed so far. We're almost near 100 uh, subscribers and I did say that I would do something a little bit different, um, a bit special if we get over 100 subscribers. So that might come relatively soon, we'll soon see. But uh, until then, uh, thanks to all of those that have subscribed so far and, um, you know, again, look after yourself, play your games, fix your games, all that good stuff. And until next time, ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theatre is now closed.